Welcome everybody, Talks for the People, episode 44. We're here for you this week. More of our nonsense, more of our football talk, because it's still Saturday down south during football season. We're also going to talk about random bullcrap, because everybody's still busy and we didn't really plan this out. So we're going to have fun. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Doing good. I'll tell you what did not age well. Our football predictions last weekend. <laughs> no. Look, nobody, nobody was right. I was talking to another coworker that you two are both in a uh, football pool with at work, and uh, not a single person in y'all's group took Texas A and M. To even cover that 18 points. None of y'all. There's, what, 17 people in y'all's group. Nobody took Texas A&M to even cover 18 points. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and get this out of the way, and I'll make it public, because uh, if you did catch last week's episode late and you saw the comments, my brother did get in there to pick on me. Uh, said he wanted an explanation or a, a recap of that game. And, and like I told him, like I've told everybody on this podcast numerous times, as y'all know, I'm not the, uh, I'm not the a-hole type of Alabama fan. Uh, we went in there. We expected to steamroll them. We played like crap for 80% of the game. And when there's a team that wants to beat you that bad, <laughs> You you can't play like crap at all. They took advantage of it. Uh, they beat us. Uh, they beat Alabama. Texas A and M won. Kudos to them. They they broke a hundred game win streak against unranked teams. Uh, Jimbo Fisher became the first uh, Nick Saban former assistant to uh, beat his former boss. And out. Uh, <laughs> It's all the it's all the talking points. What are they going to talk about now during the Mississippi State game today? I mean, well, they're probably going to talk about. They'll talk about. Out of Allen's camera going. They'll they'll talk about our they'll talk about our loss to Texas A and M the entire game today. Uh, in Alabama's defense, though, if you don't see a, a final score and you look at the stats you are going to be blown away at the fact that Texas A&M had 41 points because Alabama almost had 550 yards of total offense. Texas A&M had under or right around 250. So half of the total, and they outscored Alabama. So, I mean, of course, there was a, a, a punt return for a touchdown and some defensive plays and whatnot. Not really turnovers, but just big plays outside of that. But you would be baffled to see 250 yards would be like, they put up how many points? So, well, look, I'm going to give credit where I'm where it's due, and I'm going to go ahead and make one more. Well, not one more. I ain't going to say that, but I'm going to make a prediction for the rest of the college football season. Alabama does not make the playoffs this year. We've got one more loss for sure. Listen, I see you making that face. But when Alabama loses to Georgia in the SEC championship, we don't make the playoffs. Well, that's the only scenario that keeps y'all out. Well, I mean, Georgia, Georgia's looking tough this year. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hop along, Steven, running off to grab something. Uh, oh, he's gone. What's up, Cody? Oh, man. It's another day in paradise. Watching oh, hop it, uh, watch the wind blow. Hop along's back. Sorry. What's up, Captain Pegleg? <laughs> So uh, my uh, Rumba is making my dog freak out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, by the way, um, I did complete my second bet. <laughs> so if you can notice my hair, <laughs> I had to make some changes because LSU lost to Auburn. So uh, it's done. 
That's, I, I'd still say you got off easy on this bet. I agree. I'm all right with it. <laughs> For the record, that is not frosted tips. That is my lot. Your frosted tips. <laughs> to frost. <laughs> well, that's good on you, really. I mean, what, so well, what does the wife think about it? She doesn't. She uh, she she's not too. She doesn't feel bad about it. <laughs> it's it's not as bad as she thought it was going to be either. So <laughs> yeah, she's like, that, I'm all right with it. She's not cutting me off for the next month or two or three. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I well, if I would have walked in this house looking like Justin Timberlake, it's gonna be May. She would have been like, No, you need to get the hell out. <laughs> I, uh, back to the Alabama game. I, even though Texas A and M won, I still stand by what I said last week. He he is the most overrated, overpaid coach in the country. I, I mean, agree. He, I mean, hell, Gene Chizik beat Alabama, okay? It's, it doesn't make you a great coach, so he's still overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I am 100% on board with that. All right. Well, while we're here, uh, let's force me to do a little bit of work after we get done recording this. Let's roll this new football intro, and let's go ahead and talk about some football. Let's start. Y'all want to start with big games, or y'all want to stick to the SEC when we start in first? Let's uh, let's talk about today's games. Yeah, we'll go with yeah, we'll go with SEC. I think would we'll, we'll be good. All right. First on the list, eleven o'clock, or these are Eastern times. Uh, no, eleven. Eleven's right. Uh, Auburn and Arkansas. Now, now look. I know that this is normally. Uh, a trap game for Auburn. Like even in the past, when Arkansas sucks, like this is y'all's, this is y'all's Mississippi State, Ole Miss to Alabama. Like y'all go in, you're expected to win, and they give you fits. They don't always win, but they give you, they give you fits. How do you see this game playing out today, Cody? Well, like you said, Arkansas always plays us tough. Uh, it's at Arkansas. They're they're good this year. That quarterback is really good. I think Auburn's going to have a rough time today. But I did pick Auburn against the spread because I've missed Auburn every every week this year. Every When, when I went against them, they covered. And when I took them, they didn't cover. So uh, I, that's the only reason I picked Auburn on my sheet this week. But I think Arkansas probably covers, though, wins the game. I, I just, Auburn just don't have enough offense to to hang with that guy. What, what, who are you taking in Auburn, Arkansas, uh, Stephen? I I agree with Cody 100. Uh, percent Arkansas is tough this year. Arkansas is one that gives is going to be giving a lot of people fits. And I and I hate to put it in this perspective, but if you look at Auburn, their trademark game right now is a victory against LSU, who just got freaking molly by by Kentucky. Just absolutely <laughs> embarrassed. I mean, they they didn't just get spanked with one side of the hand. They spanked and then came back with the backside for the second spanking. They just they were just going to town on us. <laughs> so uh, and, uh, Auburn for me, along with LSU, has to show me a lot more to convince me that they're going to beat teams that are equal to better than them. Because uh, LSU, the same way, is anybody equal talent or better i'm not convinced either one of them wins a, a, a team that's equal or better they just they don't look great <laughs> uh i do think arkansas wins this game but i'm going to give auburn the benefit of the doubt and say that uh say that old bo pulls some more of those magic plays out of his butt crack and they manage to uh they managed to keep this close. I say Arkansas wins by no more than 10, probably only a touchdown. Next game, 
Next game on the docket. This one's for Steven. How are you feeling about LSU's chances against Florida? Well, it depends. If Florida wants to throw shoes, we're a shoe in to win. If Florida <laughs> uh, plays average football, they beat us by 10 points or more. So. <laughs> Um, I have, I have, not that I don't love my team and hope for them to win, and just to prove that on my pickums I chose LSU. I don't think they're going to win. I think the spread's like fourteen. I don't it's, think I don't think they cover. It's it currently like it's currently setting at twelve, but I'm not sure what y'all picked against. LSU. I don't think LSU covers that. I, think I chose nine my or ten. nine or ten. Okay, yeah. so I, mean, I don't think they cover that, but I chose them because that's my team, and I have I believe in them, but I also don't believe in them. <laughs> so I'll put it this way: you know, if we're talking about how I feel my team's going to do today, I think they're going to get stomped, and then for the rest of the season, I think they got one win left on the schedule. I think Louisiana Monroe is the only team we win. We lose. To Arkansas, we lose to Texas A&M, we lose to Alabama, we lose to Ole Miss, and then we lose today. I, I am not confident we can win any of those games, especially the way those other teams are playing. Arkansas is playing great ball. Texas A&M, I think we're way more talented than Texas A&M, but as of right now, coaching status, even though Jimbo Fisher is overrated in my opinion, I think they outcoach us. Uh, I'm Florida's going to have their way with us today, especially at the way last season ended. And we should not have beaten them. Oh, man, they're finna give us the beef today. They are not happy with us. <laughs> uh, I, I do think uh, Florida wins this game, and they probably probably do cover. Uh, I'd say 14, 17 point win. Uh, and that's that's probably that, that might be that might be being nice. Uh, if LSU it can come in, in top form today, they only lose by 10. Thanks. <laughs> so Florida, Florida's a funny team this year. They've kind of, they've kind of played to their opponent's level the whole season. When they played Alabama, they played them tough. And then when they played Vandy, let's see, was it Vandy last week? I think they played pretty. Like the score, the score was that they played really well against Vandy. But if you watch that game, they really didn't play that good. And it, they've been like that the whole season. So it wouldn't surprise me a bit if, if Florida and LSU get in a dogfight today. But with it not being at night, it being kind of a morning game, uh, I think I think Florida probably has a score in the fourth quarter to cover. Win by 14 or so. Yay. <laughs> Next I, game. I've been for a while, though. I really do. Yeah. Next game on the docket, we got Texas A&M at Mizzou. Does Texas A&M crash after that major upset they pulled last week, or does Mizzou just suck so horrible that they make Texas A&M look really good? Mizzou sucks that bad, in my opinion. I think I think I don't I don't know if they what's the spread? Uh, Eleven. Yeah, I mean I, I can I can see Texas A&M covering that against Mizzou. Sadly. Well, <laughs> I stuck to my guns this week. And any time that you have a huge upset like that and they go on the road the next week, I always take the other side. So I took Missouri. I stuck to my guns. Even though I do think Missouri is absolute trash and I think they could get thumped today. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, just, I'm sticking to my guns, and um, I'm never, ever going to take a team like A&M who just upset the number one team in the country and then going to go on the road and play. I'm always going to take the other side of that because they, cause they should come out flat. But Missouri is not very good. So. Yeah. yeah, Missouri, you know, as a Bama fan, it's a little bit hard to say anything good about Texas A and M. But in my opinion, they're gonna they're gonna ride that, and I think they pull out a win. I don't know if they cover the spread. They they probably Texas A and M probably does cover the spread, uh, but Missouri just Missouri's trash <laughs> this year. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and skip over to the uh, less exciting games. Uh, Vanderbilt, South Carolina. Oh, God, South- that's bottom of the barrel. <laughs> South Carolina is an 18 and a half point favorite. <laughs> And they suck. So what's that tell you about Vandy? <laughs> Vandy's yeah, dude. Vandy's a dumpster fire. Yeah, I, God, that's that's a hard one. Yeah, you know, to... Vandy, I'm picking Vandy because I think they don't they don't win obviously, but I I don't think they'll lose by 24 and a half is what you said. 18 and a half. I don't think they lose by that bad. They'll lose, but not by that bad. South Carolina's bad too. <laughs> Yeah, my my thoughts in this game were that uh, both of these teams are so bad, I don't think either team is going to score three touchdowns. So I'm going to take the (laughs) dog because there's there's no way somebody's going to score more than that (laughs) in in this Uh, game. Yeah, Yeah, I'm with you. Give me Vandy and the points. Uh, One that uh, is everybody's expecting to be a really good game. It's the... uh, it's the only other nighttime game tonight. Ole Miss at Tennessee. Ole Miss is only a one and a half point favorite. I think Ole Miss wins. I, I, I'd, li- I'd like, honestly, I know a lot of people hate Tennessee, but I have a close buddy who's a Tennessee fan. And, you know, I've only been going through hardship for two years, so I feel his pain at this point. I mean, it, it's it's got to be bad to watch Tennessee be trash for like 15 seasons straight. So I I would like to to see them beat Ole Miss and kind of not say they're back, but just kind of give them a feel like they're on the right path instead of okay, well, we're just like every season before this. <laughs> you know? They're starting to turn into a bunch of Eeyores. Okay, we got another football game to lose today. <laughs> Man, y'all remember y'all remember a couple years ago when uh Tennessee was playing Alabama at Bryant Denny and they actually scored a touchdown and their player ran through the end zone and like flipped off our <laughs> flipped off our, our our student section and then the meme came out it's like yeah go ahead Tennessee remind everybody how many years it's been since you beat Alabama <laughs> <laughs> so uh that being said Tennessee I mean this spreads so low because obviously somebody thinks they're gonna win but I I think Ole Miss pulls it off Obviously, at one and a half points, they they cover. Uh, I think the game is much closer than any average fan expects it to be, and I do think that the uh, I think that the odds makers are closer to being right. Uh, I say Ole Miss by either a, a a single touchdown at the most is is what I'm going with. I can agree with that. I think Tennessee competes, but I. Ultimately, I don't see this being a blowout like a lot of people think. Ole Miss is just going to roll through there. Because Tennessee's better than they're getting credit for right now because they haven't really been proven, I guess. But I can say that Ole Miss wins, but really close. Yeah, Tennessee, they're, they're a funny team this year. They've, they've looked really bad at times. And, man, the last few weeks they've looked really good. I've been watching this quarterback, and this, this guy's dynamic. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout. And if you look at the the over under in this game's like 82. 80. 82. 82. 82. Do you think that has anything to do with Ole Miss's offense being that good along with Tennessee's or Ole Miss's offense being that good to balance out their defense being that trash? Cuz let's be honest, I'm pretty sure Vanderbilt could put up 21 on Ole Miss and Vanderbilt I think he scored one touchdown all season. <laughs> 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 Old Miss's defense is super trash. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I, I watched that quarterback at Tennessee, and man, he he he's really coming around. And uh, in fact, I got a I got a funny feeling that the, the Alabama Tennessee game in a few weeks may be interesting. Maybe kind of fun. Maybe kind of fun to watch for a little while. But uh, I did t- I did pick Tennessee. That line's actually come down. It was it opened. It actually opened about three and a half. 
So a lot of monies went on Tennessee this week to get it down to the to the one that it's at now. And uh, I like I like Tennessee to. Uh, I think they get a big. I think they get a big win at home today. That'd be awesome. I don't know. It's, it's just a weird feeling. Uh, moving on, we got Alabama at Mississippi State. Uh, did, Mississippi State does tend to be one of our trap teams. We play down to, but I think after, I think after last week, Alabama's gonna go in there and. I, I don't even think Saban has any uh, remorse for Mississippi State, and I I really don't think we take our foot off the gas in this game. Like if we can, if if Alabama can get rolling this week, we might double that spread this week. I think I, I think Alabama completely rolls over State after what happened last week. Yeah, no, that, that wouldn't surprise me not one little bit. I feel that if Alabama was driving a car and hit Mississippi State and they got stuck under the car, they wouldn't slow down. They'd just keep going and let him <laughs> drag the ground. Like, it is, they are, they are in, you know, it's, it, they, there's been the longest talk about Alabama. The hardest time to beat Alabama is after they lose a game. I mean, it's tough during regular season as it is, but they lose a game. Hey, bro, don't expect to play them next week and get a dub. Like, yeah. Nick Saban's got those guys so focused. They're, ma- they're making sure their children's children are safe from Nick Saban. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't see <laughs> that Mississippi State is even competitive in this game. It's amazing what public, what the public persona is of stuff like this. So normally, the last ten years or so, Alabama lines come out. And they'll move a good two or three points more than whatever it is when it opens. Because everybody just hammers Alabama. This week, it's pretty much stayed at 17 to 17 and a half the whole week. So they're getting even money in Vegas on both sides of this. And I I don't know why. I mean, I know that uh, Mississippi State has the type of offense that gives Alabama fits. True. That kind of that kind of stuff does. I just don't think they have the athletes this year to pull it off. And Alabama's coming off a loss. No, no, no. I don't care if this line was 28. I'm taking Alabama in this game. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yup. All right. 230 game. Battle for the SEC East. Two undefeated Defeated teams go head to head between the hedges. We've got Kentucky. We got Kentucky versus Georgia. Going with the cats. What's the spread? Wait, wait, wait. To, to cover or outright? You gonna make a? You gonna make a hot pick? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just to cover. It's twenty-two, Stephen. Where it was uh, twenty-two early in the week. It's 21 and a half right now, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can see Georgia winning by 21, but I don't see them winning by – I mean, just because Kentucky's going to play hard. But I tell you what, you know, I, it's, Georgia's a scary team this year. I mean, and if you want to compare, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, 2000, I think it was 2007's LSU team where th- them and Alabama got into that 9-10 to 10 game just because the defenses were that raw. You know, Georgia's got one of those defenses this year. They are absolutely suffocating. I think they've had a turnover in every game this this year so far. And to top it off, out of, what, uh, six games, four of those games, they had defensive touchdowns. Pick sixes, fumble returns. Their defense <laughs> is absolutely terrifying. And Kentucky, if they want to play up and down the competition like they kind of have been, I feel they, they could keep it close, but... I, I would be baffled if if they were within ten or even won it, but I because Georgia's just that scary to me. But I so I I do pick Kentucky because I twenty two is is that's a stretch because you know Tennessee's uh not Tennessee's uh, Georgia's offense hasn't been they they've done a great job, but they haven't shown me juggernaut offense. They've shown me good offense 
and stellar defense. So I, I, I pick in Kentucky, but Georgia wins this easy. Look, can, can y'all imagine the hell that would break loose if the Wildcats march into Athens and, and upset Georgia? I mean, Texas A&M beat Alabama last week. Unranked Texas A&M beat Alabama last week. No, I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. Let me tell you why. If you look at the SEC West standings right now, the bottom two teams are Auburn and LSU. <laughs> When's the last time you thought the bottom two teams in the SEC West would be Auburn and LSU over Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Arkansas? That sucks. <laughs> it sucks. So it wouldn't surprise me, but it would be crazy. <laughs> I will I will definitely be be watching that game. Uh and that's all we've got in the SEC today. I did flip over to top twenty-five and there's a whole bunch of nothing going on. <laughs> I mean uh you have Iowa playing Purdue, you have Cincinnati playing UCF, so that's number two and three playing two unranked teams. You got Oklahoma currently at number four playing an unranked TCU. Uh, there's nothing. The SEC is where it's at this week. At least we got some games to watch, unlike right, <laughs> unlike everybody else. Uh, so not a, not a lot going on. There is plenty of room for upsets. I don't follow these other conferences uh, quite as much, but. Let's be honest, Purdue is not going to beat Iowa. UCF is probably not going to beat Cincinnati. Does TCU stand a chance against Oklahoma? Maybe. But... I think so. Oklahoma, I think Oklahoma is so overrated, just like they are every year. They're going to lose a game. Even if they don't play a ranked team left on the schedule, they'll lose one game. They should have lost the game last week. Oh, absolutely. Warning them and let them come back. Yeah, no, Absolutely. I was, man, I was in there. I'm an Alabama fan, and I was in there rooting for Texas. Every time they would go up, I'm like, I was screaming. My dogs were terrified. Like, I was getting into that, that game last week. It's crazy, because you know what happened? They took Spencer Rattler out and put the backup, they put the transfer quarterback in, and he freaking wins the game for him. Yeah. He killed it. I've been hopeful Spencer Rattler got benched. <laughs> all right well we'll go ahead and wrap up the football talk we got a little bit of time left is there anything else y'all wanted to touch on this week i have a question for y'all and this this has been something that i was thinking about the other day so you know you have you go through life and you have special relationships with people you know i just you have things that happen, you talk with people, people you know you super well. If you were to die tomorrow, what would be the top three items somebody would put in your casket to put to bury you with? And so and here's here's what brought this up is I was thinking about my my high school best friend, right? And this sounds super weird, but if he were to die tomorrow and I were to go to his funeral I would put a pop tart in his casket, <laughs> and you know the story behind that. There, I'm I'm persistent. So the story behind that is he actually moved from Tennessee to Auburn like his junior year of high school. He had no friends. I mean, high school is the last place you want to move in the middle of the the. You know, you want to finish high school where you're at because you have your friends, you have your connections. You know. You don't want to start a new school two years before you're done with school, with high school, you know, with grade school. So he moves down to Auburn, and he's got no friends. He's not an outgoing person like I am. I mean, he's really, he's like, he's like Colby. He's super quiet. He's super reserved. And if you had to compare him to a character in a movie, he'd be a hobbit. Like, dude will sit in front of his computer and play games all day by himself. He won't talk to nobody. He won't play games with friends. He just, he likes to be alone. But we were, uh, he was sitting in the hallway with, you know, kind of across from me waiting for school to start one morning. And uh, I was talking with my friends and whatnot, and I had a Pop-Tart. 
And I was offering everybody, I was like, hey, you want a Pop-Tart? And they were all like, no, 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 we're good. We, hey, you want a Pop-Tart? And then somebody said yes, and another person said yes. And I look over at him, who's been by himself for like the past two months, not talking to nobody, just being by himself. I'm like, hey, man, you want a Pop-Tart? He's like, no. I'm like, come on, man, it's just a Pop-Tart. They're delicious. Eat a Pop-Tart. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, come on, peer pressure, everyone's doing it. Because like everybody over here had a Pop-Tart. He's like, okay, fine. And, and he took a pop tart, and from then on, we've been best friends. Like, <laughs> like best friends. So, if if he were to die tomorrow, I would put a pop tart in his casket because that that one tiny thing had such a significant meaning, and it probably propelled him through high school with at least one friend because he's not that type of person. He doesn't he doesn't go out and make tons of friends. He just wants to get through school and be done with it, you know. So, we we form that connection over a pop tart. And that is uh that's one thing I put in his cast. So it made me think, it's like, you know, of all the people I've run into, like, for example, if I were to die tomorrow, what what would y'all put in my casket besides a big you know, maybe a Coke. <laughs> you know, what, what would y'all put in my casket if I died tomorrow? I mean, what would I put in y'all's casket? You know, so I I know Cody loves guitars, but that's that's his thing, but what would be our thing for me to say, this is what I believe Cody would expect me to put in his casket? Same thing for Alan. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I, you know, if we would have gone to the Attila concert, I would still have your concert ticket. If you died tomorrow, Alan, I'd be like, you know what? Me and Alan had this moment together. And, you know, I'm going to put this ticket in his, in his casket because that moment meant a lot to me. He took me to my first mosh pit, gave me my first black eye. You know, it was a good time. <laughs> You know, things like that. You know, so maybe it got me a question. So ultimately, the question is, if y'all die tomorrow, what things from other people would you expect to get in your casket? A bag of, a, a package of chili ramen. <laughs> oh, man, your wife would put that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Steven, I, th I think I would put a taco in yours. Either a taco or an order of wings. <laughs> One drum in, in each of y'all's casket. Y'all both get a drum. Like, wings is it. Hey, Cody, do you think there'll be enough room in Steven's casket for his body and his ego? No way. <laughs> but that's what a mausoleum. <laughs> that's so wrong. <laughs> Hey, we can bury him down there in, at uh, New Orleans. They have the, you know, the big crypts. So yeah, yeah. Any room to put him and his ego in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> and, and since just since there's proof that uh, Alabama fans aren't the only ones that live in the past, we got to put him a a mighty Joe Young jersey in his in his <laughs> casket with him. Remind him of the last good season LSU ever had. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely gonna bury him with all his LSU shit. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Go Tigers! Get in there, bury it. <laughs> Go Tigers! Yeah, it's like I, I, I'm not gonna lie, and I'm gonna need y'all help with this. If y'all walk up to my funeral and y'all see me in a suit, y'all look around and ask everybody there, "What the is wrong with y'all?" <laughs> and then I need you to lay a shirt over my body. It looks like it's on me. An LSU shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. Mine's changed over the years. I think at one time, someone probably would have put some golf stuff in my casket, uh, which golf has been a big part of my life, but uh, not so much the last few years. I know a can of Beanie Weenies would be in there. That's oh. <laughs> Yes. Every time I go to my grandmother's house when, when they were still alive, uh, she always kept a big old stack of beanie weenies in there, and I was always eat a can or two while I was down there visiting. Mm -hmm. And it just became a running thing. Uh, hey, I love beanie. I got some now in the in the cabinet. I always <laughs> keep some. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, somebody would probably put maybe the Eagles' greatest hits. The seventy-two to seventy-five album. Uh, probably throw that in there. 
and man, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe guitar pick or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd probably put a uh, Guns N' Roses album in Allen's. <laughs> I would haunt you. I would haunt you. <laughs> like I would. <laughs> I, I, I would. I would haunt you. <laughs> Look, when I got to hell, I would. My first request to the devil would be to come back and haunt you for the rest of your life. Don't worry, I'll make his life freaking miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine, uh, especially as of recent, I, the, if I had to choose like a top three, uh, there would be some form of chocolate. Yeah. Uh, there would probably be some type of gaming accessory, a controller or an Xbox or, you know, something because because as much as I enjoy gaming and I've been able to do it a lot more lately, which makes me happy. And probably something soccer related. It, just a regular soccer ball or uh, one of my coaching trophies or something of that nature. Just, I mean, those are, those are really my three passions. But, you know, so you, gonna, you want to be buried with balls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the balls. I'm going to be like Pac Man. I want to swallow balls until I die. <laughs> Uh, for me, it would honestly be a, a, a pack of ramen, chili flavored ramen, the green pack only, not that shrimp or sweet chili, the chili, chili, chili flavored ramen, uh, my PC, and probably, probably my collection of band shirts, some, or something, some way to remember my passion for music, heavy no. music. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put it in Jamie's head. She's going to take your collection of band shirts and get somebody to weave it into a quilt, and she'll put that quilt over you in the coffin. But here's the other thing. I'm not going to have a coffin, so... You can make them... You can, you can make a... What's the thing called uh, when you... A shrine around my urn and okay. just leave all this stuff sitting there. I got you. Yeah, somebody asked me that the other day, and I was like, I was like, no, nah, I'm not getting cremated. I hate being hot. I can't, <laughs> I hate doing it. I can't do it. I don't like to be hot. No, this was decided a long time ago. I'm going, I'm going cremation. I'm not. <laughs> I'm fucking frozen will be the best thing for me. Cryogenically frozen. Yeah, but haven't you seen the movie Forever Young? If they do bring you back, I mean, you're just going to age super fast. It's not going to do any good to be alive. Well, I won't care. At least I'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're always cool in my heart. Thanks, boo. Is that just be is that just because your heart's so cold? Probably. Yeah, it's got a frozen heart. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, outside of that, I mean, I can't really, can't really think of anything. I mean, besides the 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 basic things that y'all already know about me that people would kind of set in my coffins. But now I do have like for for the pe like for my family members, people that are super close to me, I have a relic of some sort or something from uh, each family, especially like my my sister and my mom who passed away, like. I would like all of those things with my family members that I've kept. That means a lot to me to be in there. So I have, you know, my sister Nicole gave me something. I have something for my sister and my dad that means a lot to me. My dad gave me a 50 caliber bullet shell that I've kept with me all the time. So, you know, I, I would like for that shell to be in there. And then my, I have a, a, a necklace with my, my sister, the one that passed away, her fingerprint on it. I would like that to be put in there. Just those little things, the, the icons of my family member, the, the, things that I think about the most to be in there. But outside of that, like just the basic stuff, you know, video games, soccer, LSU, chocolate, I think that covers everything. <laughs> no Disney? No Disney? Oh, man. It's, you know, and, and of course Disney. So I, I have Disney, <laughs> Disney football stuff. So, I mean, it's like... I have a Disney coffin. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It took us the whole episode. We got him to clip his mic. Yes. 
Dang it. Uh. <laughs> All I do is bring up Disney. Oh. <laughs> Man, you know how much a Disney coffin probably costs? You imagine like, you open it up and it's got like the the backdrop of Magic Kingdom on the inside and on the cloth or, or whatever that is on the inside of it. That would be crazy <laughs> awesome. That that would be super cool. I bet that coffin would be like fifty grand. It'd be better just to get an urn. Yeah, like a Disney urn. I know you don't want to be cremated, but <laughs> Disney urn to put your ashes in that has like a the castle and everything around it. That'd be or a good maybe one. Maybe the castle. <gasps> when you wake up on a <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That would be great. Anyway, I think we are about to where we can wrap this particular episode up. Y'all got anything else y'all wanted to uh, go over? Not to be. No, uh, I've been in the movies a few times the last few weeks. Saw the new car, uh, the new Venom movie, Carnage. Super good. Uh, whenever these guys see it, if they watch it. Maybe we'll do a review on it. And then I also watched the new Bond movie. Better than I thought. So go out and check it out. And, uh, of course, coming up, we got the Halloween movie. I'm going to go see it. It's out on Peacock right now, so it's free. Oh, really? Yep. Peacock. Is that the NBC? It's a, it's uh, a streaming service, so it's just like yeah. a Netflix or an HBO, but it, Peacock is, is a free subscription. Hmm. Well, that's uh, that's cool. That's coming out, and then the uh, let's see the Spider Man coming out next month, and uh, Eternals comes out pretty soon too. Oh, really. okay. Yeah, so lots of good stuff coming up. Go out and support your local, uh, local theater. They need they need it. Yes. Rock and roll. Oh, I also started Squid Game. So I'm. Whenever, I'm probably. Oh, I'm. It. Yeah, I'm probably starting that either tonight after the games or tomorrow. And we'll see, but that one looks that one looks fun. So we'll go ahead and wrap things up this week. Everybody have a good week. We thank you for sticking with us. Uh Leave your comments below. What you think about our football predictions? What would people leave in your casket? What would you? I want to know what you, people who have stuck with us and have watched more than half of these episodes. People, people, fans, tell us below. What would you put in our caskets? Just one thing. One one thing for each of us. What would you put in our caskets? After only knowing us from this podcast, what would you put in our caskets? Let's see if we get any comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we should get more organized in a couple more months. The, 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 these next few episodes are going to keep being thrown together like this, but uh, we'll get it back on track soon. Everybody's lives are kind of crazy right now, but we'll get it back together. Everybody have a good week. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Peace.